morning and welcome to uh, our service of morning prayer on this Friday the 18th of March. Um, you'll have to excuse my voice this morning, I've got uh, a stinking cold, uh, not coronavirus but just a cold, um, so we will battle through together um, and hopefully my voice will hold up. Today the church commemorates Cyril, Bishop of Jerusalem and teacher of the faith. Born in about the year 315, probably in Caesarea, Cyril became Bishop of Jerusalem when he was about 34 years old. There, he nurtured both the resident Christian population and the many pilgrims following the end of the era of persecution who were beginning to make their way from all over Christendom to the places associated with Christ. Cyril taught the faith in line with the orthodoxy of the Council of Nicaea and the creedal statement that became associated with it. Though he found difficulty with the word in the creed, uh, which described Jesus as being of one substance with the Father. Nevertheless, he took the side of the Nicene party against the Arians, who denied the divinity of Christ. His teaching, through the catechetical lectures uh, intended for those preparing for baptism, show him to be a man profoundly orthodox and sound. And his liturgical innovations to celebrate the observance of Holy Week and Easter are the foundation of Christian practices to this day. He died in the year 386. So we'll have some uh, prayers of intercessions a little bit later on that reflect. Um, thinking of uh, a teacher of the faith today as we pray for those who um, pass down uh, teaching uh, to us as we um, celebrate our faith and worship God. So let's spend a moment in quiet as we come to God in prayer. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 45, starting at verse 16. When the report was heard in Pharaoh's house, Joseph's brother have come. Pharaoh and his servants were pleased. Pharaoh said to Joseph, say to your brothers, do this, load your animals and go back to the land of Canaan. Take your father and your households and come to me so that I may give you the best of the land of Egypt and you may enjoy the fat of the land. You are further charged to say, do this, take wagons from the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives and bring your father and come. Give no thought to your possessions for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. The sons of Israel did so. Joseph gave them wagons according to the instruction of Pharaoh, and he gave them provisions for the journey. To each one of them he gave a set of garments, but to Benjamin he gave 300 pieces of silver and five sets of garments. To his father he sent the following, ten donkeys loaded with good things of Egypt, and ten female donkeys loaded with grain, bread and provision for his father on the journey. Then he sent his brothers on their way, and as they were leaving he said to them, do not quarrel along the way. So they went up out of Egypt and came to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan. And they told him, Joseph is still alive. He is even ruler over all the land of Egypt. He was stunned. He could not believe them. But when they told him all the words of Joseph that he had said to them, and when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of their father Jacob revived. Israel said, Enough. My son Joseph is still alive. I must go and see him before I die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so a short reflection on our Genesis reading from this morning by Rachel Truick. All the fear, sadness and loss in the family story is now met with abundance and joy. There is almost a sense of happy ever after. Yet the source of the happiness is not in the giving of the multiplicity of goods, but rather in love and restored relationship. Many years previously, Jacob too had proffered a lavish gift of material goods to family, although this time in fear. 
He had gone to meet his estranged brother Esau and hoped that the numerous herds of flocks would be a gift to appease his brother, whom he had wronged. However, Esau wanted none of it. The desired gift was that of reconciliation, and when Esau embraced Jacob, it seemed too good to be true, and he exclaimed that it was as if he had seen the face of God. There are resonances of that time of grace as Jacob now hears that Joseph is alive and the brothers discover forgiveness and new possibility. In these days of Lent, as we stumble towards Good Friday with all our struggles and flaws, the abundant treasure of Easter Day is still present. God is making all things new, and yet it is only by opening ourselves to the undeserved gift of God's overwhelming and abundant love that we will discover the gift of restoration and the happy ever after that will one day be made complete. Challenging and comforting words to us in this time of Lent. We say the Benedictus together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so let's pray together. We pray to Jesus, who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and nourish us all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow you in the way. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life for the sheep, Recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Accept our prayers and be with us always. Amen and the collect for today. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things that are agreeable to the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it's been a pleasure to pray with you as ever. I hope to see you again soon and uh, I hope that you have a wonderful week. God bless.